up, everybody? Hi. Okay. Let me fade this out. Uh, that was me practicing right before this started. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Uke Revolution. This is a live lesson for the Alicia Keys song, A Fan Got You. And what did I want to tell you? If you're watching from the future and you just want to um, skip around to different parts of the lesson, there are timestamps in the caption that are added after the live stream. Um, so yeah, you can find the parts of the lesson that you want to, or you can skip right to the play along if you just want to get straight to um, playing the song, if you don't really need any of the information of the lesson. Totally no problem. Please do you do you. So in this lesson, we'll look at the chords. I already put the chords up for um, the chords that you need for this song. And we're going to look at um, strum patterns that we can use. And we're going to look at uh, the chords, the different parts of the song, the verse, pre-chorus, and the chorus. Um, we're also going to look at the uh, finger style intro riff, which you just heard on um, the intro of this video. That was me practicing it, actually, <laughs> while I was waiting for the stream to start. <laughs> it was live. Most of it was live, and then I looped it. And later on, we will put on a beat, the same beat that was in the intro, and play the whole song with the beat. That um, intro beat that was just playing right now is just a teeny bit slower than the original. We'll probably um, do that just for like practice purposes today. So welcome. And if you want to get um, the full PDF arrangement of the song, a lot of the images that are on the screen today, all of the images on the screen are taken, or screenshots taken from the PDF arrangement. Um, you can join on Coffee as a monthly member, or you can check out the shop there and you can just buy the PDF, um, just single item of anything in the library. And there's some freebies there, there's some freebies in the shop, so check it out. I think that's all of like the shop chalk information stuff. So let's talk about the chords that are in the song. We have uh, C major seven. Whoops, this is not on. Okay. C major 7, B minor 7, A minor 7, G major 7, I play like a little bar chord, you can also play it with fingers like this, and then we have C minor, C minor is actually optional in this arrangement, we'll see what that's about later, so that's the same shape as G major 7, but it's on the 3rd fret, so again you can use 3 fingers if you want, or you can use a little bar. E minor 7, D7, again I play this as a bar chord, you can play it with three fingers here and a finger, a pinky on the A string. And then we got one kind of weird chord, this is A flat, diminished 7. Um, I like to play these diminished 7 shapes with my thumb on the top string like this. So we got a uh, thumb here on the first fret, pointer finger on the E string middle finger on the C string and ring finger on the A string. So it's like a little grab. Uh, Phoebe Buffet might call this like the reach around or something. <laughs> reach around. <laughs> um, if you want to play with standard finger positions for this chord, you're going to put ring finger on the G string, middle finger on the E string, pointer finger on the pointer finger. Pointer finger on the G string, middle finger on the E string, ring finger on the C string, and pinky on the A string. Hi Tracy, welcome. If you want a simplified way to play the get around this chord for this um, arrangement, and you're still like, especially if you're still like in the just strum down phase of playing, you can play G7. Instead of playing a flat diminished seven and it will sound okay it will sound okay for this arrangement um let me see i'm like glasses on glasses off what are we doing okay so for this song the strum rhythm this the rhythm of the song the tempo the time signature the meter whatever not the tempo the meter the time signature whatever you want to call it is six four so this is a little bit different than what we usually play most often. Songs around this channel and in popular music are in 4-4. Four, four. So today we have 6-4. That means in between these forward slashes for these strum patterns and for the um, 
chord parts of the song that are coming up later, when there's two forward slashes, in between all of those, there are six beats. And we're counting it one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's like a little waltzy kind of swinging back and forth thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means in the strum patterns, we're going to divide those six beats in half. One and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and one and two and three and four and five and six and to make these strum patterns. And in the intro riff, the finger style thing that I show you later, we're going to divide them into three instead of in half. So that will be one and a two and a three and a four and a five and a six and a. It's that little cascading waterfall sound that she makes with the piano in the beginning. It's still in six. We're just dividing the beat different ways. So for this, oh, I made a new one. <laughs> We're gonna made a new one. I made a new one for this image. Okay, so on the song sheet, I already corrected the song sheet because we were live earlier and then I had a network outage, so we're back again. And during that live stream, I realized I put the same strum pattern twice because I'm thinking about it two different ways depending on the part of the song. The first two lines, yes, they are the same thing. That's, um, a, a, I guess it's kind of a good mistake. At least I didn't leave something out. <laughs> But I did fix this on the song sheet, so there's only one now. So uh, this strum pattern that's on the first two lines is down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And with just a G major 7 chord, that will sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and... If you want to make it a bit more rhythmic, and I, I often do this when I play this song, I put a chunk on the four. Um, that's kind of why this ended up here twice, because originally I had a chunk on the four, but I decided to just keep it clean and we'll tell you about the chunk during the lesson. It's also noted on the song sheet for any of these strum patterns, if you wanna make it a bit more rhythmic and also give your chord hand a break from like sustaining those down and up strums, you can put a chunk on the four and that will sound like this. Down, up, down, up, chunk. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, chunk. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So the second line is the same. I put four pre-chorus because in the pre-chorus, you'll see later we're changing chords faster. And I'll kind of show you how that works with that strum pattern later. The other two strum patterns that are here, the third line is just a down strum on the one, three, and four, and six. So that will sound like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, if you want to give that a chunk. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Or you can just give it a mute. Just something to stop the ringing of the strum is the goal. So on that, on any four and any strum, a mute or a chunk. And the last one, this is a very simple down strum. This is um, like the most beginner one in the set. We're just strumming down on one and four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, mute. One, two, three, mute. One, two, three, mute. Um, today we're spending a little more time demonstrating strum patterns because we're in 6-4 and we're usually not. These are kind of unfamiliar rhythms, maybe. Um, there is a strum pattern index lesson on the channel that's linked below in the caption. It has a PDF, a free PDF that comes with it um, with all of these different strum patterns laid out for all kinds of rhythms. And something like this, where these aren't in that 
strum lesson because it's a different, it's kind of an unfamiliar, different time signature. I add them continuously to the uh, strum index document that's in the library for members. So if you get the free version, it has like 16 strum patterns on it. And I think the one in the library now has like 30 or so. <laughs> so we're always adding uh, strum options around here for stuff you can do. So let's look at the verse chords. We'll get back to these intro chords a little bit later when we look at the intro riff. Um, but for now, the basics of the song, the verse, we have G major seven for six, E minor seven for six, A minor seven for six, and D seven for six. And then on the second line, we have G, minor, G major seven for six, A flat diminished seven for six, A minor seven for six, and D seven for six. So we have kind of the same thing happening except we change this second chord. The first time it's E minor seven, the second time it's A flat diminished seven. Um, Preston said something that I can't see the end of because of the way, wait a minute, let me see. Let me pop this out. Some people just strum it all. Oh, wait, are you making a joke about the lyrics of the song? I get it. <laughs> I think, or I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> So if we use that uh, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down strum, the first one, the first one here, and you put this down here into corner, <laughs> and we'll have a little practice of this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So each, uh, each chord is getting one round of that pattern. One, two, on the G major seven. Down, up, down, up, down. E minor seven. A minor seven. D seven. I'm gonna add the chunk. G major seven. A flat diminished seven. A minor seven. D seven. And I'm just noticing right now playing that. I'm also putting a chunk on the six sometimes. So the first half of that pattern, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then the second half would be chunk, up, chunk, up. It's up to you. It happens just kind of incidentally for me, subconsciously. So when I notice things happening, I try to point them out to you. <laughs> okay, let me see what's happening, yes. Those are the verse chords. Let's look at the pre-chorus and the chorus. And in a little bit, I'll put some lyrics up and we can look at what these different parts are like with the lyrics added over the top. So as you can see, in the pre-chorus, we start changing chords a bit faster. Um, we have G major seven for three and then A minor seven for three. And this happens on every line of the pre-chorus, just at the beginning. It's the same start of the line, and then we finish it a little bit differently every time. G major seven, A minor seven. Then we have B minor seven for three, and A minor seven for three. Second line, same thing, G and A. B minor seven for three. And then we're moving really quickly through these three chords. They have one beat each. C major seven, B minor seven, A minor seven. It's a walk down. It's a walk down to the G, C, B, A, G. And then we have G and A again. And this is like the first line. You see the first and the third line are the same. B minor seven for three, A minor seven for three. The last line, almost the same again. G major seven for three, A minor seven for three, B minor seven for six. So when we have this last bar, let me just show you that on the second line, the last bar with those three quick moving chords, and then we'll practice the whole thing. That bar, B minor seven, and then three quick changes. One, two, three, one, two, three. I'm going pointer finger, bar, lift it up. So it's a fast change, but like fairly 
easy to move between those chords. One, two, three. And you just have to practice that little, that little change to get it like in your muscle memory. So we're gonna do, this is why I put, there is method to my madness sometimes. <laughs> For this, this strum, the down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now that we're moving faster, each of these chords that has three beats is gonna get one little down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, change, up, down, up, change, up, down, up. So we'll try to go kind of slow. I'm gonna turn this drum pattern off. So this is, yeah. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I'll try not to take it too fast. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. G, A. B, A, second line, G, A, B, one, two, three, G, A, B, A, G, A, B. People want it all. Now I get it, Preston. <laughs> Some people just strum it out. <laughs> nice one, nice one, nice one. Um, let me see. Yeah, if you can think about it as like you're always doing this kind of G-A-B pattern and throwing in some little sprinkles of uh, flair. <laughs> I'm going to do it one more time because I'm still trying to get it like into my groove too. One, two, three, four, five, six, G, A, B, A, G, A, B, here it comes, C, B, A, G, A, B, A, G, to the chorus uh, what was I gonna say on that bar with the three quick changes the B minor seven I just strummed down once I think that's what I'm doing B minor seven bum, bum, bum. so all of those just get one down strum the chorus the chorus chords let me kind of move that out of the way we have C major seven for six B minor 7 for 6, A minor 7 for 6. And we've got the same kind of rhythm as in that weird bar in the pre-chorus we just talked about. G major 7 for 3, and then we do a little walk up thing. We're walking up this time to the C. So we have G major 7, A minor 7, B minor 7, one beat each, one downstrom each. Second line looks almost the same, right? C major seven for six, B minor seven for six, A minor seven for six, G major seven for six, or this is where this optional C minor comes in. Anytime we're leading into the verse, there's a little like sneaky walk down in the original production. Ba bum, some people live. Ba bum. So, like a handy little way we can do this on the ukulele is to play a C minor here. It probably is technically a, technically a A flat major seven, <laughs> but it's very easy to get the same sound and it's almost exactly the same set of notes. If you C minor and it's the same shape as G major seven. C minor, G major seven. Where's my verse thing so you can see what it's leading into? Hang on a second. <laughs> this one. 
it's in the intro too. I'll show you that in a little bit. So this C minor at the end of the chorus is leading to this G. So this C minor comes on the and of six. It happens really fast. In that bar, we would play G major seven for five and a half. <laughs> five and a half. And usually there's a pause or a stop here. Um, if I got you, yeah. We just strum down once for that last G major seven in the chorus. There's kind of a pause. And then if you can sneak it in, the C minor. Bum, bum, some people live for the power or whatever. Now we're to the verse. A little walk down. CG. If you um, have a really resonant instrument, you can even do it as like a slide. So you don't have to strum down twice. You're strumming down for the C minor and then immediately sliding down to the G major seven. Sounds cool. Whoops. <laughs> Wait, why am I doing it wrong? Why isn't it working now? <laughs> so I muted the strings too much. Wait. Three fingers. Wee -oo, wee -oo, some people live. And that comes in the intro as well. This is the note that's on the song sheet. Sneaky walk down on the end of six leading into first bar of the verse is optional. So let's see. We're going to practice the chorus chords and then we'll put up some lyrics. Yeah. And then we'll do the intro riff. So on the down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. One, two, three, on the C. C. B. A. G. G, A, B. C. B. A. G. Do, do. On this quick change, what's our finger doing? It's also like a fairly efficient change, <laughs> fast change, if you use the bar shape for the G. G, A, B. You're just pressing down for the G, you lift for the A, and you're putting the same finger back down for the B. Just making sure you loop in that extra string, the whole bar. G, A, B. Let's see. First lyrics, first lyrics. Let's do, let's do, let's do, um, let's do this. I don't want to do the entry yet. With the same down, up, down, up, down, up thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, G. Some people live for the fortune. Some people live just for the fame. Some people live for the power, yeah. Some people live just to play the game. verse with the lyrics. Let's look at the pre-chorus and the chorus with the lyrics. And I smushed these together because they really kind of lead into each other. Hence the title pre-chorus. And also, is this the right way to move? Okay, let me move myself over a little bit so you can kind of see my hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ready? Here we go. Wait, I lied. <laughs> I lied because we need to come from the verse, actually. This first um, this first lyric, that G major 7 is from the verse. It's the very last 
Oh, 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 I'm thinking about it wrong. I'm thinking about it wrong. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. My bad. I'm thinking about the verse as the pre-chorus. Never mind. <laughs> this is... This. I'm thinking it's the chorus already. Some people think... They all start with some, so I got them mixed up. <laughs> we can just play it. We can just play it. We don't have to... We don't need a lead in. <laughs> One, two, three... <laughs> There's six. One, two, three on the D. Some people think that the spiritual things we find was within. Here's quick change. And I've been there before. But that life's a bore. So full of the superficial. that little C minor thing that little C minor uh sneaky down <laughs> sneaky down thing let me think let me think anything like of note the lead-in thing that I was I was confused about where it came is on that the end of the pre-chorus that B minor seven is six beats long and these first lyrics some people come on when it's still that B minor seven. Superficial, some people want it all. Just a note that B minor seven is kind of longish. It run, it bleeds into the chorus. Okay, let's look at the intro riff. It's so cool. <laughs> I love this riff. I love that we can play. Sometimes you can't really get a whole like solo or a riff to sound right on this instrument because of the the way the strings are organized but this this intro this riff sounds really cool on a, a uke thing i think it works really well let me just play a little bit if you didn't hear it at the intro of this video and then i'll explain it to you missing part of the image oh, I am Ooh, oh you know what that means that thing wait where is it <laughs> I tapped this whole thing now I can't find it wait a minute oh no wait is it missing oh no that's the whole thing that's the whole thing that's the whole thing <laughs> oh my god live stream brain when live stream brain attacks, it really is a thing. It cannot compute things properly because I'm so focused on the live stream. Okay. So this is the whole thing. <laughs> We've got these um, little dee doo doo dee doo doo dee doo things happening six times each. So this one that's on the seventh fret is six times. This one happens six times. They're all one beat of a bar split into three so a little triplet sound one and a two and a three and a four and a five and a six and a we can make like a teeny tiny chord shape to make these a little more efficient to play so for this one on the sevens and let me collapse this real quick okay this one on the sevens um, looks like a G major seven or a C minor shape, but we're way up here on the seventh fret. So in the seventh fret, and you make a little miniature bar like this, and then you're just playing these bottom three strings. I'm using, it's different for everybody, but let me just tell you which fingers I'm using. I'm using my thumb as an anchor on the neck, and then I'm using my pointer, middle, and ring here, one for each string. 
Some people might find it easier. Some people might find it easier to use your thumb and pointer and middle. It just kind of depends on like your own finger strength and dexterity for each of your individual fingers. And it's a little bit different for everybody. But I like to have my thumb here as an anchor. So that's that seven one. For these next two, they have the same um, like miniature chord finger position. We're on the fifth fret, the E and the A string. So I like to make a little teeny tiny bar. It's like when you're forming a B or a B flat chord on this E and A string on the fifth fret. And then my middle finger is on the sixth fret. And then again, it's these three strings. Because I'm holding it up and getting a weird angle and it sounds funny. <laughs> so that's five, five, six. And then you slide this position down to the third fret, four, three. And we're doing six times here, three, three, four. Again, it's just these three strings. You don't have to move this. This is already where you need it to be. The last one here on the two, this is a G major seven shape. So you can bar that those bottom three strings on the second fret. We're only doing it three times there. One, two, three. Because the last three beats of that bar are this um, A string, second, third, and fifth fret. So usually when I play that, I'm holding that G major seven shape. Just pluck the A string. Then I got middle finger on the third fret and pinky on the fifth fret. Or you can pick up your fingers and move your pointer finger along the bottom three, along the bottom string, two, three, five. So that little bit with the twos here and then two, three, five. almost the same thing again. So we've got the seven the same. When you get to the one with five, five, six, there's a bit of a walk down. It's a little bit tricky. If you have trouble with it, you can play that part like this again, doing six times on here and six times on here, or you can put this little walk down in. So we're on the five, five, six part. And we do that five times. One, two, three, four, five, then you slide that down one fret. So now this is the four, four, five part one time. Slide it down again for the three, three, four. And we're ending on a G major seven. So the second half of that, I'll play it really slowly. And then we can go back to the beginning and play the whole thing really slowly. From the middle here on the seven one. So you can see what it sounds like. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. G major seven. Some people live. My God, this <laughs> this finger, this crease is getting worked out today with all these little bar chords. So the whole thing, slowly from the beginning, is like this: one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, third fret, four, five, six, G major seven, two, three, five, same thing, ish, four, five, six, two, three, four, five, six, one, <laughs> almost forgot, four, five, six, G major seven. Burn air, some people live. And then you take a little time out and you massage your hand because it's getting tired from all these bar chords. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Super love this riff on um, the uke. So what I wanted to say was, oh, I just, for some reason I didn't, um, hi Demi, bye Demi, see you later. <laughs> Priyanka, thank you for the super chat. Yay. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, this is the same for the outro. The outro of the song has the same riff. The same exact riff. And then it ends, the song ends on the G major 7. And there's this like, um, what do you call it when they go zing up the keyboard? <laughs> you know, there's like this ascending really fast scale <laughs> that I didn't tab, but um, kind of a little embellishment on the end of the song. In my arrangement, we're just ending on the G, G major 7. But it is the same. The outro riff is just the same as the intro riff. If you don't want to play the finger-picked intro and you want some chords to play i'll show you um glissando yes thank you thank you Kristen. <laughs> but actually i think she does articulate the notes and if you know the g major seven scale which i don't <laughs> if you know the scale then you could mimic it if you know the scale for g you could mimic that glissando Ah, there was a music theory note about that intro riff with those like kind of mini chord shapes just a second because it kind of feeds into the outro and how you could end the song. But really quick, let me go over what like the chord version of the intro is. Oops, I didn't mean to move myself. I meant to move this box of chords. Okay, so you can play C major 7 for 6, uh, B minor 7 for 6, A minor 7 for 6, and G major 7 for 6 and do that two times. And that's the intro in a corded version. I don't know why it's not showing me some of the um, chats, but anyway, just saw Demi's chats. Let me see if there's some anything else I left out. Okay. No. Okay. Great. Deep doop doo. So we're gonna play the whole thing. Just music theory nerd moments about this riff. Um, so these chords that match are actually being played in this finger picked riff. We're just leaving out the G string. So you can make on the seventh fret, you can make a C major seven chord. And if you play that whole chord shape up on the seventh fret, it's those bottom three strings. But you're gonna add um, the G string on the fifth fret. So this is a major seven shape. This is a C major seven. So that's where this like little arpeggiation is coming from. It is coming from a C major seven chord. So even if you if you didn't want to use like the standard shape for this corded version of the intro, you could get a little bit fancy with it. You can play that as a major seven chord up here. It's the fifth fret, the G string. can't get it to sound, sound right. And these two, B minor 7 and A minor 7, are represented in these little arpeggiations. So that shape is, I think it's a bit more difficult to make that shape. Let me see. That's on, yeah, okay. It is 
the fourth fret. What is it? The fourth fret and then the rest of that. Okay. Where 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 am I? Where are you guys? <laughs> Get back over here to the chat. Okay. Um the B minor seven, if you that inversion of it that has the five five six. Um, this is a really hard shape to make, but it's the fourth fret, the G string, and then you have that five five and six. That's a B minor seven. Like it's an awful shape of B minor seven. <laughs> and the same thing here with the three, three, four. That's almost an A minor seven, but we have to add the G string. So that would be the second fret, the G string, and then that three, three, and four. That's an A minor seven. It's just a different inversion of these chords. Um, especially with that C major seven, it's like much higher pitched than when we play C major seven down here. Bling, bling, bling. Ah, oh, gosh, this is hard. It's a hard chord to play. You can do it as a bar, kind of. Bling, 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 bling. Bling, A minor seven, G major seven. It's really nice. They're really, it's like a nice descending sound, but they're awful shapes. So I would just recommend to use the regular shapes if you want to play the intro with chords. Okay, so we're going to play the whole thing. And I'm kind of marking it vocally today. I woke up with a little bit of a sore throat. And also I don't really have the musical, the vocal belting chops that Alicia Keys does. So I tend to do a lot of this song in falsetto. <laughs> um, I do have the falsetto chops. I don't have the belting chops. All right. Let me put our little beat on. And we'll get the vibey mic going. Hey, yeah. Loss of reverb. Maybe just a little reverb. get this beat up a little bit. Okay. Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I gotta get my full, I gotta get my full arrangement up on my iPad with all the lyrics and stuff. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to do, I'm gonna attempt to do the intro rip. <laughs> Ready, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Wait, I gotta make sure this is loud enough too. So when I switch mic sounds, it gets a little quieter. Okay. Okay, let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six. is A minor 7. Some people live just for the pain, pain, yeah, yeah. Some people live for the power, yeah. Some people live just to play the game. Pre-chorus. Some people think the spiritual things decide what 
lyrics throw me off a little bit in this pre-chorus. So I'm going to go back to the beginning of this uh, second pre-chorus. Wait a second. These lyrics are a little bit confusing. And with no beat real quick, I want to mark these lyrics. And be the world on the silver platter and what good would it be to share with no one who truly cares for me. Okay, so for this, just like a note for, for everybody, I'm having a much easier time in the pre-chorus phrasing the lyrics if I just strum down instead of trying to do the strum pattern. Um, yeah, just strumming down for these chords once. Any of them. Okay, getting back into it. I want to start with verse two, because the <laughs> these lyrics, second time around, new lyrics, makes it a bit trickier, right? Okay. So on verse two, this one. Some people search for a fountain The promise is forever young Some people need three dozen houses And that's the only way to be loving Hand me the world on a silver platter and what good would it be? See, be with no one to share, with no one who truly cares for me. Some people want it all. I don't want nothing at all. And hey, you, baby, if I chords again. A minor 7, G major 7, B minor 7, up down, up down, up down, up down. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! Good 
Good morning, French ukulele lady. Hey, Bernie, what's up? I just realized in that, like, this works, sideways mic works when I have the speaking mic on, but when I'm doing the performing mic, it's a little bit muffled unless I come straight on like this, but I can't turn it. <laughs> I still need to get the proper, I know, what, this isn't the proper, uh, this isn't the proper mic stand for this mic stand thing? No, Hello Kitty tape is not. <laughs> Hello Kitty tape is not actually how you um, mount this mic on here. <laughs> I still have, a, <laughs> it's a long boring story. So this mic's gonna be sideways for a little while because if I come straight on it, yeah, of course it sounded better because of the way the mic is made. <laughs> I was like, wow, this sounds really like um, in the distance. Ah, it's because you're on the side of the mic, dummy. Yeah, I'm gonna play it again. I'm gonna play it again. And what am I going to do better? <laughs> ah, the A flat diminished seven. Here are my notes. Notes, I think notes help people. And it helps, I think it helps to see like the work. I've talked about this before on live streams. I think it helps to see the work. Um, The A flat diminished seven is surprising me every time. I just want to play E minor seven. <laughs> mm. And the lyric phrasing for the song's difficult sometimes, for sure. So when you're having um, a section that you find the phrasing of the lyrics difficult for you, just strum down. That's my note for myself, too. I'm just strumming down on these now, especially in the pre-chorus. It's got a lot more chord changes. And I'm going to try to do the, the riff on the outro again. Because this time I just did the chords. Yeah, I'm going to play it one more time, and then we're going to wrap it up. Let me see if I can, if I move back a little bit, I can turn this. So I'm straight on, a little bit more straight on the mic. Nope, just messed it up. Coffee break. <laughs> I see what it's doing. Okay. Never mind. I won't ask too much of you. Uh, mic stand thingy. It's a precarious situation right now. <laughs> this microphone. Okay, good try it again. But I am turned sideways a bit to look at my iPad with my lyrics and stuff, and also to be directly on this mic. Okay, let's do it. And I just slowed it down two, two beats. <laughs> I was on 115, now we're on 113. It feels fast, doesn't it? Okay. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, on the little intro thingy. <laughs> I totally miss it. Super <laughs> 
not on. Okay. <laughs> Verse 2. Some people search for a fountain. The promise is forever young. Some people need again i have more tips i have more tips um the ending if you want to use that little walk down trick for the ending that also sounds nice even if you use the deedly deedly do you can use that little c minor walk down thing um at the end and was the other thing if you're having trouble with the fast changes that happen in the pre-chorus and in the chorus in the pre-chorus you can just play this G A B A pattern so if you look at the second line it's the same as the first line right except for that C and B chord that come in the last bar so you can just take those out if you're having trouble with that change, like squeezing that change in. So this line would just be G two three A two three B two three A two three. And an example with the lyric, where is that? Ah, uh, wait. Some people think that the spiritual things define what's within, and I've been. So you're just playing the the line the same as the first line and the third line. It's always the same line. We're just adding that C and B here. But you can take them out if you want it to be easier. Same thing for the chorus. Some people want it all, but I don't want nothing at all. Be. If it ain't A minor 7, if it ain't G major 7, some people want 
instead of playing that G-A-B at the end of that bar in the first line, you can just play the G for the whole bar. Work around. Um, I wish I had said that earlier in the stream. I will put it in the notes of the caption. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm glad this worked out again. Because this weekend's so busy for me, I don't know when I would have rescheduled this <laughs> live stream. I was like, crap, I hope the internet starts working again because I don't know when this is going to happen. <laughs> um, I'm going uh, less than over. I'm just going to talk about personal shit for a second. <laughs> if you're not interested, see you later. <laughs> um, I'm going to house hunt in... Phnom Penh, the capital city that I'm moving to in a few weeks. I'm going to house hunt on Sunday and Monday. So today, Friday, and tomorrow, Saturday are very busy work days for me. And then Sunday and Monday, I will be off. But I will be in Phnom Penh looking at several apartments and hopefully choosing one of them to live in. <laughs> so thanks for... I'm glad that um, I could reschedule this live stream pretty quickly today instead of having to put it off like another day or so um because I don't know when that would have happened and that's it now is siesta time around here hope you guys have um a great day thanks for tuning in don't forget to hit like if you didn't hit, hit like yet on the way out and I will see you um next week with a little Nina Simone jazzy cover peace out everybody have a great day thanks for coming bye